On today's show, Oxford, Paris and Amsterdam all mole going EV only. LG Chem announces plans for its own Gigafactory in Poland that will provide batteries for 100,000 plug-in cars per year. And Hyperloop One becomes Virgin Hyperloop One thanks to Richard Branson. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero Certified Renewable Electricity Company. We're 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining me. Over the past 18 months or so, we've started to see more and more countries around the world push towards a future where there will be a ban on the sale of all new internal combustion engine vehicles. Well, now we're starting to see a push on a more local level, with three European cities pushing to ban internal combustion engine vehicles from entering their city limits completely. Copenhagen, Paris and Oxford all announced proposals to do just that this week, with the city of Oxford, England announcing its intent to make six streets in its city centre zero emission only from 2020. By 2035, meanwhile, Oxford aims to ban all vehicles with a tailpipe from the entire city in a move that it says will clean up its toxic air pollution of the ancient city and improve the health of its residents. Good on you, Oxford. If you watched last week's show, you'll know that Land Rover launched its first ever production plug-in hybrid vehicle last week in the form of the Range Rover Sport P400e plug-in hybrid. Well, this week, its big brother followed suit, with the Range Rover P400e making its first steps into the world. Like the smaller Range Rover Sport model, the Range Rover P400e plug-in hybrid is capable of around 30 miles of all-electric range, although that's yet to be officially rated, and also has a 2-litre four-cylinder gasoline engine up front that can operate to provide power when the battery pack is empty. While it will operate in parallel hybrid mode by default, Land Rover says owners will be able to force the vehicle into all-electric mode at the touch of a button. Oh, and while I'm at it, while it's only sort of related, Land Rover's partner Jaguar hinted this week during an interview with Johnny Smith on the fully charged YouTube channel, check it out, that it might just offer a bespoke conversion service for customers looking to turn any XK-engined classic big cat into a luxury electric car. Sadly, it's just a hint, but Jaguar wants to allow its existing customers to continue to enjoy their beautiful rides long after internal combustion engines have gone the way of the dinosaur. Watch this space. And now for all you cool Kiwis, I want to tell you about a new price plan Ecotricity has officially launched called Eco Wholesale, which makes it easier to save your wallet and save the planet. Eco Wholesale links you directly to our 100% renewable wholesale prices with a small admin fee. In fact, it's now New Zealand's most affordable carbon zero certified electricity. There are no joining fees, no mixed term contracts, just New Zealand's most affordable way to buy power. Eco Wholesale is available to Kiwi homes and businesses, solo users and EV owners too. You'll help save the planet for future generations and save money to boot. In fact, we've already got some lucky residents residential households in New Zealand who've saved a massive 400 bucks in just 12 months and some business customers who saved well over $4,000 per annum. So clever Kiwis switch to Eco Wholesale with Ecotricity. It's the cleanest and most affordable way to charge up your home and electric vehicle. It only takes a couple of minutes to join Eco Wholesale, so just follow the link in the notes below. When I talk about electric car battery packs on this show, I normally either talk about Tesla and its massive gigafactory in Reno, Nevada, or Nissan, which has actually recently sold its battery business to a Chinese firm, and sometimes LG Chem, the South Korean company responsible for the battery packs found in a number of popular EVs today, including the Renault Zoe EV. Over the past few years, LG Chem has seen a massive increase in demand for its high-density electric vehicle battery cells. And so this week, it announced a doubling in size of a planned new battery facility in Poland, taking it from enough battery packs for 50,000 EVs per year to enough battery packs for 100,000 EVs per year, or if you prefer, six gigawatt hours of production per year, making it the largest battery facility in Europe. It's not only good for the city of Rokor, Poland, but it's great news for the EV industry as more battery packs means lower cost. 
This next one is a short little PSA for anyone with a Tesla Model X with flat fold seats made between October 26th last year and August 16th this year. And that's because Tesla has issued a voluntary recall on around 11,000 Model X SUVs with foldable second row seats made during that period to rectify a potential problem with the release cable located in the second row seat back. Tesla says certain release cables may be incorrectly installed and as such may cause the seats to move forward in the event of a collision. But no, notes, it's not received any notification of such an event occurring in the real world. Less than 3% of the 11,000 recalled vehicles made are believed to be affected, but Tesla is going above and beyond, as always, to ensure all vehicles are checked. Not far from the headlines for the past year or more, Hyperloop One, one of several companies trying to bring Elon Musk's Hyperloop vision to commercial reality, has changed its name this week to Virgin Hyperloop One. The reason? a major cash injection from Sir Richard Branson's Virgin Group, which will see Virgin Hyperloop One focus on developing a passenger and mixed-use cargo service for Hyperloop around the world. And with the company eager to build Hyperloop systems everywhere from Dubai to Colorado, I think it's going to be very, very busy indeed. I'm still not 100% sure on how much it's all going to cost, but with Virgin on board at least, there is now a fairly good cash stream available to it, right? This, as I'm sure you'll know by now, is the Porsche Mission E, Porsche's first foray into the electric vehicle market segment. Expected to offer Tesla Model S range and similar performance, the high-end four-door sedan will also feature an ultra-fast CCS charging standard that will be able to replenish its battery pack from empty to 80% full in just 15 minutes. Well, it turns out that it's not the only car that Porsche is working on, as this photo from this week's Electric Vehicle Symposium EVS 30 shows. Meet the E-Cayman, a development vehicle from Porsche fitted with the same CCS charge standard as the Mission E and a similar battery pack and a presumably a car that could make it into production. I can't wait. Unless you're really into your electric motorcycles, you may not have heard of Italian firm Tessita, which to date has been focusing on producing motocross, supermoto and dual sport electric motorcycles for the European market. Well, this week, it launched a new cruiser aimed at the US called the T-Cruise. Complete with a 30 kilowatt electric motor and five-speed gearbox, this bike looks like a classic US cruiser and can be configured with a choice of three different battery pack sizes. The largest? 27 and a half kilowatt hours, which the firm says will be good for 186 miles. That's nearly 300 kilometers of range per charge. The bad bit? That range-topping model will cost you almost as much as an entry-level 2018 Nissan Leaf. Yeah. Involved in the FIA Formula E race series since its inception and partly responsible for the single-seat race cars used in its first few seasons, you'd be forgiven for thinking Renault is embedded into Formula E as some of its drivers. But this week, we learned that Renault is bowing out of Formula E in the not-too-distant future and its alliance partner Nissan is most likely to take its place, putting it in a head-to-head -head race with other Japanese automakers keen to prove their racing pedigree in the Zero Emissions Race Series. We'll likely hear official confirmation in the coming months, so I'll bring you more news as I have it. The chances are you probably wouldn't associate an oil company investing in an electric vehicle charging infrastructure company. And if it did, you'd probably think it was doing so in order to close down the competition and keep people pumping hydrocarbons, not electrons. But this week, Royal Dutch Shell acquired European charging network New Motion in a move that, were it from any other oil company, might make me worry. But given that the CEO of Royal Dutch Shell was mentioned on this show a few months ago, as publicly proclaiming that electric cars were the future, reiterating a desire to offer fueling for electric cars along other side fuel forms, I don't think we should be worried yet. Or do you think we should? And finally, we've all been caught out by a bit of range anxiety every now and then. And if you've ever driven off the beaten track, you'll know it can be a real worry when you're in an unfamiliar territory, aren't sure how far it is to the next functioning charging station, and get that dreaded low battery warning light. Well, Amazon, yes, Amazon, thinks it has the arts to range anxiety in stranded EVs. Behold, it's recently granted patent for autonomous electric vehicle drones that will deliver your car an emergency charge if you ever get stranded, or you just need to top up to get to your destination. While there's no video of this in the real world, the idea is that the drones fly in, dock with the roof of a low-charge EV, 
give a quick DC boost of power via special prongs on the vehicle and the drone itself, and then move off again, helping you reach your destination without ever stopping. I'm not sure if it will ever become a reality, most patterns don't, but it's an intriguing vision of the future, don't you think? And with that, it's time for me to bring another episode to a close. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, tell your friends about the show, and if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness, so make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend, make sure you do something fun, and help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time. <laughs>